So again, this is J-Kid, the, the autographer, back again for the final part of the podcast series, A Requiem for Anime Conventions. The first part is uh, was interesting to me, me as an autographer slash hall cosplaying photographer, my experience in the anime convention scene in the DC metropolitan area, my ministry of photography channel, my future plans for the channel before the the great Corona Chan lockdown started, and how the great Corona Chan lockdowns affected the anime convention scene and myself. The second part was my opinion on online cons, how it's a poor substitute, and in some cases an insult to very further years of fan conventions and anime conventions. And it's about virtue signaling, virtuality signaling, cancel culture, and alienation and isolation of people when they find out that their cosplay friends and con going friends have embraced the the uh the Corona Chan pandemic culture. AKA the people who knew for the past decade or two turned to Corona Bros. Now this third and final part of the podcast is how can anime conventions can recover a lost year due to this. It's been over 15 months since a full uh, service anime con. Since a back to normal anime convention. And... And all this time from these major anime cons, what we got are either more platitudes and meme posts and boilerplate cancellation notices. And for the conventions that are finally going up and running, Instead of just having a bigger bear convention, they're just going all in on safetyism as a form of virtue signaling. As a form of virtue signaling to the Corona Bros. Having proof of fascination, mandatory masking, even if you are fascinated, uh, physical distancing, uh, outdoor events, instead of having new events and new ways to get people to the convention, because many conventions are in the red and struggling due to lack of revenue due to the fact that all their in-person events have been cancelled. People have been missing a year or two of conventions. As I said, it takes two weeks or two months or two years, depending on the size of the event or store, to lose a habit. And there are growing amount of people that begin to move on from anime conventions because the community has been virtue signaling and virtue shaming anyone that wants to go back to normal. And people who get fushy shame for not enjoying the new dystopian normal instead of a push back to normal. <sighs> so conventions, what they, what conventions need to do instead of, uh, instead of, uh, yeah, so conventions need to do, in my opinion, is to go all in on getting back to normal, getting back people to conventions. The fast scenes are already here. It's time to plan for a return back to normal. We need to remind people, con con goers and convention runners need to remind them why we attend anime conventions. To be with other people, to have fun, and to escape from the troubles of the world. These are something that we proudly took for granted and we were practically not allowed to do for the past 15 months. Now, I've covered how I'm against uh, fasting passports because they're affected. I mean, they're ineffective, they're discriminatory, and they're a waste of time and, easily, and can be easily forged. I made two videos about uh, safetyism and hygiene singling, especially about blood con and canary con and gen con, and their vaccine mandates, and a video of how New York Comic Con is going all in to, on the hygiene on the hygiene video that will be that it, that will just suck the fun out of the convention, despite vaccines available. Why waste money and time treating vaccinated people like biohazards when uh, Corona Chan is long gone by making your events better to get people in? What con go 
Now, what Congos are going to do, the Congos, they are hungry for any escape, any convention that is back to normal. What Congos are going to do is not bother attending at all, or they'll have to travel to a state that basically says to them, come to our state, come to our convention, we are free of mask mandates and, and hygiene fear, we, we're basically back to normal, and we encourage you to get fascinated if you want to or have to. Either way, come here, get away from crazy world, and spend your money and stay a while. If you're in Florida, you're probably going to need, want to stay a while because the, the so, be, 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 may, uh, to take a quote from uh, the uh, to take a quote from uh, from the uh, from the movie uh, from the Harry Callahan movie series, which I enjoy since I was I don't know a twenty year old. Sudden Impact. Yes, I remember it. Sudden Impact. To take a quote. For, a quote from the movie Southern Impact, especially in uh, the state of Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale, maybe the Salt L will agree, agree with them. Florida Man Day is the price they pay for freedom. If a convention, if an anime convention wishes out to me, encouraging me to come to, come to their convention and apply for a press badge, if they make an advertisement to people saying, "Hey, we you you're tired of being stuck at home, come to our convention. We're going. We're basically we're going. We have affordable hotels. We have a we have a bigger uh, scene than you have. Just spend I don't know three hundred dollars on the airfare and come visit our convention in this city. And it's going to be in the Midwest or the South or Florida. Bas basically, if they say that, I will come here, along with other people that will come to that convention, I will have that s my suitcase packed way ahead of time instead of, instead of the last 24 or 48 minutes as usual, because I have a habit of packing uh, at the last minute, 24 or 48 hours before I leave. I'll pack that suitcase ahead of time, so I can have something, anything to look forward to other than this farce of a world we live right now. And I can basically cover that convention like it was in fall 2019, uh, early 2020, before this nonsense stops. I mean, before this nonsense be begun. And I'm hearing that anime conventions are getting rid of raves and dances for 2021. I think that's a bad idea. Because nothing's going to stop people from having their own dance as a count program outside of the uh, convention venue. Where there's going to be a lot more worse things. You will not believe how many times almost ritual for ambulances to come to the convention venue in response to people overdosing with drugs and alcohol. Because they pre-game with these, with these unlawful drugs and alcohol before they go to the convention for the dances. I've seen it happen, even during uh, MAGFest, even during CastleCon. It's almost ritual, because it happens every convention. And with, and with conventions that are having these, uh, these restrictions, being stripped down, being panel fest, being dystopia cons, People are going to have to research the least restricted convention for 2021. And it's getting to a point where it's going... The least restricted conventions are going to be in South Dakota, Texas, or, Allah forbid, Florida. Also, South Dakota, Allah forbid. Because they're the best states to live right now. In these... In this uh, dystopian... New normal. And if these conventions are not willing to go back to normal outside these states, 2021 will be their last year of operation. Anime Congos, I mean, Anime Congos and Con Runners need to stop catering to Chromebooks that have no intention of spending, spending money, no intention of ever going to your convention, 
and they will not attend your convention no matter what you do to keep them safe because it will never be enough. And what you'll do is that they will end up having Congos not going to come anyway. Well, go Congos are not going to come anyway because this vert, because this uh, hygiene signaling. They want to go cons that are willing to go back to normal. Back to 2019, early 2020 normal. And any convention that screams me, we're back to normal, come here, I will, I will buy a plane ticket. Hell, if Oricon decides we're moving our convention to, to Florida or Texas for one year, I will buy an airplane ticket. I'll, I'll fly over there. Because people will come and pay money to escape for at least three or four days. I, I will willing to actually, actually stay in Florida for five days. Two days just to sell in. And three days, I mean, one or two days to sell in. Uh, three days for the convention itself. And one day just to relax before I, before I travel out of here. For I leave Florida. And on a personal record, I will be visiting Florida again for Memorial Day. I'm not visiting New York City. As what the uh, current chain lockdowns did to New York City. Heading straight to Florida. And if there's a convention that's going back to normal, I will be I will be having that I will be doing that convention there. I will be covering that convention. I got a camera, camcorder, head cam, body cam. I have all these cameras. I will travel. Seriously. Seriously, for anyone that is listening to this podcast or watching this, if any convention does not say to you or does not hint a full return to normal, I will not, I would not buy a badge or ticket. And if you buy a badge and ticket Anyway, you basically tell them that you consent to this. You support this. And you support paying more for less. I've already made a decision not to attend BloodCon, which is a black American focused anime convention I've attended in 2017 and 2019. They made a decision to mandate vaccines for everyone attending the convention. And mandate masks, despite vaccines widely available. So even if you are fascinated, they'll, they'll still demand you wear a mask. Which is really no fun. And as a photographer, it immediately dates the foes. Why would you spend eight hours cosplaying with a medical mask? I have no objection to, to masks that are part of the costume. But a medical mask... Get out of here with that BS. I mean, and seriously, they want you to wear a mask, a medical mask, uh, along with your costume. Even if it has a mask already installed, they want you to wear your medical mask first, inside or outside, along with uh, along the, the uh, costume mask. That's insane. I mean, how many people actually attend an anime convention with, with this conditions? To my opinion, no one. Or, or those who just want to go to the dealer's room and just leave. Back to normal means back to normal. No exceptions. And here are the first... Here are the four conditions that I will definitely support. These are four conditions that con runners and anime, con, con, anime conventions... Uh, need to uh, need to do to get people to get people back into conventions with vaccines already available. First, back to normal means back to normal. No exceptions. This also means having fiscal program books and schedule books, fiscal badges, so you can pick up your badge on the first day of the convention slash day zero. Or you can have your badges mailed in. Orcon still has that option to mail in your badge. Or to pick up your badge on the first day of the con. And personally... And personally, this this choice needs to be kept. I would have the convenience 
of picking up my badge on the first day of the convention because because I tried having the I tried having my badge mailed in and it actually worked. It actually worked, but but it but I had the convenience and safety of my badge in the convention because I can tell you I want to tell you a story of how I had to uh, get my badge from the U.S. Postal Service at a different apartment since I since I had to move. Wait, uh, in a few years ago, in 2017. That's for another video. It's an interesting story. But anyway, I'll, everything needs to be back to normal. This means having physical program books, as it was in 2019. Schedule books, as in 2019. Physical badges, as in 2019. Register at the con. Registration at the con, in person, with a human face. Like in 2019. Having to pay by cash or credit card. Like in 2019. In person. On registration. Uh, and on the record. Uh, due to the fact that so many people get their badges. On Thursday. Had their badges mailed in. There are. There, there are actually. Few people. That are registered in person. They actually register in person. Few of them register in person. The lines are basically... The line for pre-registration... Is ba basically non-existent. On Friday. Even for registration. Basically, return to normal. Complete normalcy as close to possible as it is in 2019 and 2020. No fasting mandates because we got vaccines widely available, but encourage people to get vaccinated as much as possible. No health and safety measures outside of the usual health and safety measures as it was in 2019. Impossible, a few uh, usual uh, cleaning procedures in the arcade video game rooms. A complete return to normal. I will have no objection to additional outdoor events because because otaku like us have been inside their houses all day long all night long and we and we and we and, and good portion of them are suffering from uh, vitamin D deficiency we get that from being in the sun and there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be more susceptible to con crud in these conventions. Well, because while you might get vaccinated against uh Chan, you, you might get you might not get uh you might you still gonna you still gonna get sick from other illnesses outside of Chan. With that in mind I have no objection to a thirty minute health and safety presentation that could be before opening ceremonies or after opening ceremonies about the importance of having enough sleep, eating two basic meals, and definitely taking a shower. And also having a multivitamin. Having a multivitamin uh, every day. Seven days before the con, uh, each day during the con, and seven days after the convention. About the importance of not uh, being drunk, not taking drugs, and definitely the orient. If you can afford to attend a convention, you can afford to buy the orient. We definitely need. We definitely need to. We definitely need to do a. People need to definitely do a shower presentation of how to take a shower. I actually made one for Twitter. It barely got enough views. It better not. It better have any views, but this is something I can use. And on addition, I have no objection to all panels, and opening ceremonies and closing ceremonies. I have no objection to op to opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, panels, uh, workshop panels, uh, view and in addition, random footage of an anime of the anime convention, especially the raves and dances. And the arcade gameplay to be uploaded almost immediately 
after the conclusion of the anime convention, or even better, after the conclusion of the of, of each panel, it will be uploaded on YouTube, or it will be live streamed. I mean, there are plenty of people that are willing to volunteer to record panels. I've been recording certain panels for for myself, for my personal use, and sometimes I upload them to my either my personal channel or my uh, YouTube uh, channel. God. Off my off my YouTube channel, Ministry for Taku, for MacFest, Emmy USA, Oricon, and Katsukon. I got so much footage of the conventions that I haven't uploaded. It's going to take me at least a year. Matter of fact, basically, if I can set myself to have a have a stream, a video stream of a certain anime or movies. And I have this whole stack of footage on me that I can edit and upload onto my, my YouTube channel. I can guarantee you that I have uh, at least got a, a certain portion of work done. Two weeks, two weeks focus on video uploading. Two weeks off video uploading. I mean, seriously. Uh, seriously, I, as a topographer, will help in this. Even just recording one panel per day, and having it uploaded immediately. And now, now the second part of getting people, ba getting people back to getting conventions back to normal is to temporarily abolish the concept of years that are attached to the anime convention name, attached to the anime convention name with Roman numerals. The great lockdowns have interrupted almost 30 years of fan convention naming and theme continuality. And I was actually looking forward to the sports theme of Oricon 2020. And, and I'll go on discussion on that later. But first, here's how we can actually uh, solve this issue. The, uh, seriously, the, instead of having a, like, say, convention name uh, 2020, we could add in uh, convention name the number of times it has occurred. Like convention name number... Convention name the 20th, or convention name 21 or 23, just replace the actual uh, Arabic numbers with Roman numeral numbers. Replace the year with the number with the number of times the convention has held, or if you're insisting on on year numbers, had in a uh, anime convention 2020, 2021, or 2020 20, through 2022. This will this will recognize that this that's the convention for the uh twenty for the years 2020, 2021, or 2020, 2022. Basically the first and only time that anime convention that happened bi yearly. The first and last bi yearly convention. Now the third one is maintain theme continuity by any means necessary. For Oricon, I was looking forward to the sports theme with the mascots, and the badges they made for the online convention is not the same. I mean, I want you to look at these badges here. This is what a badge should look like. Plastic, or plastic-like. It was, it was size, uh, similar, God, similar to this, this badge here. If you can see it here. If you can see here, the bass can be similar to this. Yeah, similar to this. Basically, we need get we need to have we need to have the uh, we need to have plastic badges that have the same uh that have this that have the same uh yeah basically we need to have badges uh program books with the theme they had. They, they were planning to have for 2020. Basically, if an online convention had a badge theme for 2020 kept, it must be held over for 2021. Basically, 2021 theme should be the same, should be, should be the same as we had the theme for 2020. Basically, 
the theme for 2020 should be held for 2021. But in physical format. Basically, I want to see I want to see the old kind of mascots having their having their own having their own uh Actually, I, what I want to see, seriously, for Oracle 2021, if they're going to have a, have a, have a 2021, is to have, a, is to have the theme for uh, for 2020 in the program book, in the schedule book, and the badges. And this goes for merchandise. I've been collecting the uh, Oracon, uh shirts and, and sweatshirts. Almost everyone since... I started attending Oricon. And each one has a theme. I really want to see the sports theme for Oricon 2021. And especially the uh, fact that for 2020, they were actually planning to canonize the, the pigeon that, ha- that, that was in the, uh, that everyone saw. That pigeon in Oricon 2019, 2018, I don't remember which one it was, but that pigeon was in line for, pro, for that promare, and I saw that same pigeon after closing ceremonies. Seriously, seriously, I want to see that pigeon for uh for Oricon 20, for Oricon 2021. I want to see that pigeon canonized as a mascot. Same way as Krabby Chan was canonized, was canonized as a mascot during its time, during its later time in o- in Oakon, Baltimore, before they moved to DC. <sighs> Seriously, I was looking forward to that, especially the the flag the mascots were he- were holding for twenty twenty. I want to purchase that flag. That Oricon flag the mascots were, were holding. I want to purchase it for myself. Have it float, have it attached to that wall over there. I want I want that flag attached to that wall over there. I'll buy two flags. One for myself as a keepsake, and one to personal hang on that wall. A uh, blood con. Is holding their theme for 2021. Uh, Magfest is holding their Doom Eternal theme for 2022. Even though planning for a 2022 convention was ill-fated, but they had to plan for a convention anyway due to legal con- due to contractual obligations. They cannot say they cannot actually plan for this convention because it will actually actually break break their contract. Despite the fact that the Gay Lord Nacho has been closed for over a year. Since the lockdown started, I want to see that sports theme for Oricon 2020 to be held for 2021. That is my personal wish. And for every year, now for the third one, which will cannot apply for Oricon due to various reasons, and they specifically say that FAQ. For every year an anime convention has been cancelled, the convention goer need to add an additional day to make up for the lost time. Because three days is not going to be enough for lost time. If a convention cancels once, they need to add another day. Cancel twice, they need to add two days. This needs to be done to every convention, and it can be a four-day convention for two years or a five-day convention for one year. Uh, and this can be implemented as uh, this can be implemented because you can have a small, more intimate convention for day one with just one panel, an arcade room, and a large movie room for those early arrivals. Anime USA did this in 2019 and 2018. They called it a preview day and it was open to everyone. I attended those preview days. Oh, it was, it, but well, it's just me, uh, uh, document the uh, atmosphere and take pictures of the folk of the uh, convention goers and the cosplayers. And I had my ritual uh, steak dinner, my ritual last meal on day zero on preview day. Steak and broccoli with French fries, or steak and fries with asparagus. 
miss those days. I haven't, I, I, I haven't been in a restaurant eating steak for a very long time. For MacFest, it'll be a challenge because their, conve their convention or festival is normally four days. They will need to expand the convention to five days. And if they cancel again, it'll be six days. And to my experience, it'll be much worth it because MacFest is the most party of the fan conventions or video game conventions in the DC area. During the daytime, it's calm, it's peaceful. You have panels, you have uh, you have the video game room operating 24-7. You have the video game room opening 24-7. You, you, you have uh, cosplay photo shoots. But during, when, during the af but when the afternoon comes at around 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., that's when the vampires that sleep during the day after partying on the first day come out at night to party, to play video games all day, to enjoy the, uh, enjoy the concerts that are going on throughout the night, even the chip tune, the chip tune uh, concerts all night, to party, dance, and drink. And there's always something happening in the, in the in Mad Fest. Spontaneous events I've captured, like, like DJ spaces, spaces having dances, spontaneous dances, and people that, that even listen to that music, to those performers, or they're dancing to the music with DJ. Sometimes all night. Sometimes even when there's a main concert playing in the main room. Four days, four, four days of straight up partying is crazy. Imagine what five days will do. Ocon, unfortunately, cannot do an extra day or two. Their FAQ page made clear that they, if they, they did a Thursday to Sunday convention before, and it was too much for them. But if it does happen, I will buy a badge and come to that convention. If they made a fundraiser on Kickstarter or Indiegogo to have a five-day or four-day convention, I will donate at least $100 to it almost immediately. Same thing for any other convention in the D.C. area. These four uh, conditions, with the exception of Oricon for the additional days, unless Oricon choose to, are non-negotiable for me. People should demand these four conditions. And people should only support these conventions that are willing to go back to normal and implement these changes. Convention badge prices are going up and up every one to two years. Every day. I mean, every year. And we and people need more value with the price increases. We need more value for our badge. Now, there are other suggestions I can think of. Like having a 24 hour not safe for work video room. Basically, you have all the. Basically, a video room running 24 7 of Airgate. Uh, sexually charged anime. Even at 10 a.m. I'm uh, even at 10 p.m. through. Through midnight or 2 a.m. Hentai. Yes, hentai. After 11, after 11, after 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Into the convention closes for the day. Have a 24 hour not safe for work fear booth. And have a section for not safe for work, uh, uh, RS Alley and deals room stuff. Uh, people will come. People will come to that convention, to any convention, they'll offer a 24 hour not safe for, for work video booth, slash video, slash a video room. They will come. Just install, just have a, a dedicated booth to a convention, and trust me, they will come almost immediately. They'll plan to come almost immediately. And, and they're going to spend a lot of money on that convention. Trust me, there are going to be a lot of adults that will actually come for a convention. Another, another suggestion? 
have uh, YouTubers, fine YouTubers, regular uh, fan girls for panels. F small YouTubers, large YouTubers, because uh, they've been making content since the current channel lockdowns. I've been trying. I've been making content for the uh, for the panels. I mean, I've been making content for my channel. Even though it hasn't gained gained any views, at least I got at least three hundred sixty three subscribers as of this making of this podcast. Because YouTubers have been basically making their own virtual cons, virtual panels with uh, anime reviews, anime previews, first impressions, random topics. Uh, subjects of cosplay, parts of the otaku community, in anime, manga, video games, uh, light novels. I've been doing I've been doing that some of that content for the past year. And another another suggestion, which is the uh, sixth suggestion, give us reasons to come back. Standard anime convention fair is not going to be enough. The standard anime convention fair of video rooms, uh, panels, workshops, uh, arcade games, it's not going to be enough. Anime conventions need to stand out. Anime conventions need to stand out. They need to stand out from the crowd. Each anime convention needs to stand out from each one to make it unique at this point. I mean, I will have a special event, an ongoing talk show that will be streamed throughout the convention having cosplayers, even all cosplayers, come in and talk about the convention. Talk about what we've been doing, what's their plan for the convention, what we've been outside doing, like, what's their role during the convention? Have staff, volunteers, have a talk? Like an ongoing talk show. I would say have an ongoing talk show in a section of the Skyway. The convention Skyway that is on top of the uh, cosplayer's lane. Because there's a cosplayer's lane that's starting from the main entranceway or the Washington DC Convention Center, through the up through the stairs into the Skyway, basically a whole lane, whole lane that starts from the entranceway to the uh, to the uh, to the video game area, the video game hallway, and then I got many memories of cosplayers, attendees that go to or from. That, that walk back and forth in those lanes. <sighs> Seriously, standard events are not going to be enough. These online conventions were, for me, on a personal note, on my opinion, a blown opportunity to convert these conventions into uh, weekly into YouTube channels where they can provide weekly content whether it's a panel or a workshop uh, Congos will submit uh, uh, panels to be viewed panels to be watched and viewed by other by other, vi by other viewers in the channel basically like TV uh, we could have a panel Week after week after week after week. Every every week. Whether it's a workshop, a panel, or a special broadcast, a video game stream. It will make an online con much less an online con, much less as a glorified live streaming, like a T show. We could have had uh, advertisements for deals rooms in artist alleys, so it would be like a TV show broadcast 
from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. Every week, at least we'll have something to look forward to, and people will actually donate money to to keep these uh, to keep, the, keep the channels going and keep the com- and keep the convention operating in some form. Because YouTubes are doing a lot better than the anime conventions that they've been going, like Clownfish TV. Clownfish TV has has over 167,000 subscribers. And for Comic-Con International's YouTube channel, they have 46,000 subscribers. Uh, So basically, channels like Clownfish TV and the major anime YouTubers, the manga YouTubers, have have more subscribers than most of these uh, conventions have. And they've been producing daily. They've been producing daily, if not weekly, content. So basically, they have at least a panel or or a discussion or a stream every day or every week. Because that's where real online con should be. Basically, last as long as possible, make it a TV like experience. That could be the same for online convention as well. They could just convert themselves into uh, YouTube channels. So when there is an actual online convention, I mean, when there's an actual in-person convention, they at least have brand recognition. They at least say, I've enjoyed these YouTube, this YouTube channel. They're going to have an in-person convention. I'm going to plan to attend there and support the convention no matter what. Because, seriously... If these online conventions, if Ocon, if MadFest have a weekly broadcast, I will watch it every week. At least they'll give me something to support. But that's for another timeline that could happen. For me, I just wanted to attend the first anime convention that is fully operating, fully open, three to four days. I don't care where it is. At this point, I have no other choice but to travel out of state to an anime convention, unless the other option is to stay home till 2022. The friends I know that I used to attend these conventions, there's two, there's, their minds are stuck on safetyism. And I'm just over this pandemic. I'm over the lockdowns. It's time for me to go back to normal. I just want to live life again. Again, as soon as any anime convention opens up and tells people we're going back to normal, we're going to have no hygiene, uh, no hygiene fear, no mask required, back to normal, that's it. We're going back to normal. And I'll be heading there. And I'll be heading there with camera and camcorder in tow. It's sad that I have to travel out of state for anime con just to have some web, web, web semblance of normalcy. But hey, at least I got some experience in traveling out of state in 2020 and 2021. At least I got new experiences. So this J Kid, the autographer, sign out for now. If you like this video, please like, comment, and share. Contact me through email because I don't use Twitter and Facebook that much anymore. But if you do contact me through Twitter, at least I try to check back at once every 24 hours. I'm 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 all I'm always on. I have a Discord. I have a Discord uh, account. 
And I do have a Discord, uh, uh, server known as Ministry for Talku. Come feel free, visit me. And anyone else who wants to go, who wants to attend an anime convention, back to normal, in the least restricted state, you can, you can organize there. Come chat with me there. Maybe I'll, and seriously, if you want, if you want me to attend an anime convention that is back to normal, please contact me. I will gladly attend your anime convention and cover it as, as a hallway autographer, a hallway pho photographer and videographer. That's a promise. So, so, so anyway, that's all. Thanks for listening or watching. And I'll see you next time.